fountain with a statue. What's that statue by Rodin that I like so much? The kiss. Buy it. I don't think it's for sale. Buy it. <laughs> well, hi, folks. What can I do for you? <laughs> That's Tracy Richards. The Tracy Richards. She likes the house. <laughs> well, ain't that nice? <laughs> I'm Miss Richards' secretary. If the owner's on the premises... Doug? Yes? Uh, the chandelier can stay. But this whole wall comes out. Dreadful drapes. Yes, I think this will work out rather nicely. Well, ma'am, I'm right pleased. Is there an elevator? Well, no, ma'am. Generally, we just... Doug, what's the name of the decorator who did my first villa in Portofino? Scapita. Guillermo Scapita. Yes, fly him over. He's just right for this place. Very well. Them goomers, Jim. Only if I know. What do they want? Don't know that either, for sure. He asked if we had an elevator. Could be they're selling them. Tell them we don't need one. So far, I ain't been able to get a how to do in edgeways. <laughs> oh, perhaps this wall could come out too. We'll see what Googly Almo says. Let's go. Don't you want to see any more of the house? No need to. I like it. We're real pleased that you like it. Doug, the... we're going to be late for the art auction, and I must have that Marto. Now hurry. Very well. Can you tell me who owns this house? Jed owns it. Mr. Jed? Jed Clavin, but Thank I... you very much. Miss Richards is buying the house. Ten, twenty, thirty dollars. Is this all they're offering for the place? I don't hardly think so. I don't know what we paid for it, but I believe that it would top this. <laughs> Have you concluded the deal? Well, no. You see, uh... How long does it take to buy a mansion? Get it done. I'm double parked. <laughs> I I'm afraid the Clampett estate is not for sale. Do you know who I am? Well, I know you're one of the richest women in the world. Not one of the richest. The richest. And when I choose to buy something, it becomes for sale. Well, you see, Mr. Drysdale, who handles the business affairs with the Clampett family, is out of town. Summon him. He he's traveling by car, but he should... Oh. Excuse me, that's Mr. Drysdale's private line. He should be back tonight or tomorrow. I'm not waiting until tonight or tomorrow. I want that mansion today. Now. But Let's go talk to the owner. We have. When? This morning, the man who met us at the door. You're joking. That rural Rasputin was... J.D. Clampett. <laughs> well, this is going to be simple. Get the papers ready. Howdy, ma'am. Hello, Mr. Clampett. I suppose you know who I am. You bet I do. You're the lady come out this morning wanting to buy the place. I'm Tracy Richards. The Tracy Richards. Yeah, that's what the fella said. Uh, I knew your first name, Lee. <laughs> sit down, sit down. <laughs> like the whittle? Uh, no, thank you. Now, let's dispense with the small talk. I like this house. So do we. A funny thing, when we moved in, we didn't care too much about it, especially Granny, but it kind of growed on us. Mr. Clampett, I'm willing to pay your price. For what? For this house. This estate. Oh, well, we ain't looking to sell. I don't want to bargain with you. I want to buy this house. Yeah, but uh, like I say, ma'am, we ain't looking to sell. But you don't understand. Money is no object. I'll give you a blank check. Well, ma'am, if I turn down $40 cash, I sure ain't going to take no blank check. <laughs> You're deliberately being facetious. I am? No one treats me like this. No one. Like what, ma'am? Always get what I want, and I'm going to get this house. He actually defied me. Worse than that, I think he was laughing at me. That bumpkin, that hayseed. Well, Doug, what are you doing? I've been on the phone, Miss Richards. I've checked every source I know. There just isn't much on Mr. Clampett. Well, I don't need much to ruin him. What clubs does he belong None. to? None. 
And what corporations is he connected with? None. Oh, well, he must do something. He whittles a lot. I know that. Oh, Miss Richards, there must be hundreds of beautiful mansions in Beverly Hills. Now, why I want that one. No bearded hick is going to keep me from getting it. Well, now, this bearded hick is pretty independent. You might finally have found a man that you can't buy. Everyone has a price. And what else did you find out about him? Not much. He's a widower, completely devoted to his family. And as his far family? As I... Tell me about them. Well, first of all, there's Granny. You know, they say a house takes on the personality of those who live in it. This one has certainly taken on your charming personality. Really? And that of your beautiful daughter. Oh, well, he may ain't my daughter. She's my granddaughter. Teasing me. You can't be a grandmother. Oh, but I am. Ain't I, Ellie? Yes, ma'am. But you're so young. I'm older than I look. Ain't I, Ellie? Yes, ma'am. Get that varmint out of my kitchen. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Ellie. You don't see many pet raccoons. I do. That girl's got a pet everything. I never seen anyone so critter crazy. It must be quite a problem for you. Oh, you don't know the problems that I've got. But then you don't want to hear about that. But I do. Well, I don't blame you. You do? I do. You sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Let me take your coat. Thank you. Oh, my. That's a nice, soft hide. Where did it come from? I believe that came from Bergdorf's. Sure is nice. Would you like some coffee, or do you like your trouble straight? <laughs> coffee would be nice. Yeah, it would. But I just remembered that's one of my problems. Jethro forgot to go to the store. <laughs> How would you like a little bite to eat? Oh, well, fine, if it's no trouble. No trouble at all. I just happen to have some nice cold possum and gopher gravy in the icebox. Oh, oh Granny, uh, I have an idea. Let's go to my hotel for a snack where we can have some coffee, too. Well, that would be nice. I ain't never been to a big city hotel. I bet it gets spruced up. No, you look fine. And maybe Ellie would like to join us. I know she would. Ellie May! Shed that critter! Come on! We're going to have riddles at the big city hotel! <laughs> Granny, where'd you get the coat? Miss Richards, give it to me. Feel it. Mmm, what kind of hide is it? Comes from a critter called a Bergdorf. <laughs> oh, this handsome young man must be Jethro. Say hello, Jethro. Hello, Jethro. <laughs> Where's Jed? Who? Your uncle Jed, where is he? Uh, I, I, I left him at the bank. I think. Well, we's going to Miss Richards' hotel to have ears. Would you like to join us, Jethro? Boy, I'll say. Come on. You and me can sit up on the bench and talk. Well, Granny, why don't we take my car? Good view from up there. But I've seen everything. All right. I'll see what's keeping Ellie. Ellie May! Jethro, would you like to drive my car? Would I? <laughs> Where's Jethro going? I don't know. He, he just drove away. He'll be back. He don't know where we're going for vittles. He loves to drive, doesn't he? Wait till you see him eat. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Oh, hi, Miss Jean. Mr. Clappett, how long have you been here? Well, quite a spell. I come as soon as I got the call. What call? Well, you see, this fella called up and said Mr. Drysdale wanted to see me. That's strange. Mr. Drysdale's out of town. Hmm, must have heard him wrong. 
Oh, incidentally, uh, you, you may be hearing from a Miss Tracy Richards. She's, uh, she's very anxious to buy your house. Oh, yeah, she already come to see me. I got her money right here in my pocket. You didn't sell? No, ma'am. All she offered was $40. $40? Yeah, she started off at 30 and come up 10. <laughs> Oh, well, th 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 there must be some mistake. Tracy Richards has scads of money. Well, I reckon she spent it all on a fancy car. <laughs> Hardly. She inherited one of the world's great fortunes. Uh, Richard's shipping, Richard's hotel, Richard's steel, lumber, paper, electronics. You name it, she's got it. Well, she sure ain't turning loose much of it. <laughs> uh, in here, Chief. You're back early. Yes, I... Mr. Clapper. Hi, Mr. Dragday. What a delightful surprise to find you here, my... There's nothing wrong, is there? No, Miss Jean and me, we're just talking about that woman who wants to buy my house. Buy your house? Have no fear, Chief. We both turned her down. Wonderful, wonderful. I'd rather lose an arm than my good neighbor here. Who is the woman? Tracy Richards. Well, if she thinks she's going to get Mr. Clampett's house, she's got another... The Tracy Richards? That's the one. Uncommon first name, is Richard Shipping, hotels, steel, lumber, paper, electronics. That's the one. The richest girl in the world. Oh, oh. Now, calm down, Mr. Drysdale. I told her nothing doing. But if she really wants the house. Hey, look, I always thought that house was too big for Granny to take care of. All the scrubbing and cleaning, and it is a little damp and cold. Well, I thought you didn't want to lose us as neighbors. Well, I don't, I don't. You can move into my house. What do Miss Dragdale do? We'll sleep in the garage. I can pitch a tent. Dig a cave. Go to Treehouse. There must be some way to get the Richards account and still keep everybody happy. <laughs> Tarnation. Where you all been? We been to Miss Tracy's for victuals. Get up in the penthouse and what you call the terrace. Yeah, we could see for miles. Just like being back in the mountains. You ain't never seen so much food in all your born days. I had 14 helpings. Call <laughs> train of fowl just wheeling it in and wheeling it out. No dishes to wash. Nothing to do except poke at the vittles. I don't hand and foot. Sure beats working your fingers to the bone in this old rock pile. Sure does. I'll say. We should be thankful Miss Tracy wants to take it off of our hands. Nicest woman that ever drawed a breath. Regular angel. Salt of the earth. <laughs> yeah, you haven't said anything about our new dodge. Yeah, how do we look? Bought and paid for. What? You get into this car, all of you, and take this stuff hey, back. Uncle Jed. Excuse me, you're getting your fingerprints all over my car. <laughs> your car? Yes, sir. My sweetheart give it to me. Sweetheart? You mean Miss Richards? I am plum out of my skull about her. How do your skull is right? I think all three of you has popped your stoppers. Dad, what do you got again, this sweet lady? Can't you see she's just using you to get what she wants? She is the most willful, headstrong, spoiled, rotten woman Uncle that I've... I'll have to ask you not to talk that way about the woman that I'm going to marry. <laughs> that tears it. Get her, get in there and get her on the phone. Now, remember, she's all mine. Yeah, yeah, come on, I'll remember. Get in there and get her on the phone. Hey, and... and and, and no bird dog in here. Yeah. Isn't it exquisite, Doug? And I stole it for only 90000 I'm going to hang it in the drawing room of the mansion, where those hillbillies have that feed store calendar. I must admit, Miss Richards, that you have three of them run over, but let me point out to you again. It takes Mr. Clampett's signature to make... That will be Mr. Clampett calling right now. What? I'll take it. Hello there. Hello? Hello, who is this? <laughs> this, this is your sweetie. The human disposal. <laughs> Hello, handsome. <laughs> Give me that. Hello, Miss Richards? This here is Jed Clampett speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Clampett. I'm so glad you called. I'm very anxious to talk to you. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, I got a few words to say to you, too. Now, if you think for a minute, you 
can bribe. Hello? Hello. I said, if you think for one minute you can bribe, it's not like we got a bad connection. Yes, it's terrible. Well, I'll call you back. Well, I'm afraid it's my phone. It's been acting this way for days. If you really want to talk, I think you better come over here. Well, I can. It's the penthouse of the Richards Plaza. Bye. Type out the sales agreement, fill the fountain pen, ice a bottle of champagne, and get lost. Did we get away, Ellie? Well, I reckon. Who was we running from? From your Paul. He was making noises like he wanted to take the stuff back. Sure hope he sells Miss Tracy this old house. Me too. We could live like kings and queens in that hotel of her. Yeah, servants to do everything. Yeah. No beds to make. No floors to scrub. No garden to hold. No yards to rake. No meals to cook. No kitchen to clean. No critters to look after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie? Yeah, Granny? I don't want to live in no hotel. Me neither. Let's take this stuff back. Good idea. But we gotta take it back clean. Get the washer to go in. Thank you, Miss Richards. <laughs> Who are you? Milvin Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. You know, it's kind of dark in here. I'll open the drape so we can see what we're doing. Now, wait a minute. What do you want? Well, there's a piece of property you are interested in acquiring. And as a depositor in my bank, I will use my influence in your behalf. But I'm not a depositor in your bank. Yes, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> now, I have taken the liberty of analyzing your financial situation. Uh, could we have a little light? Get out of here. I'm expecting company. But I have a plan whereby you can acquire the Clampett Mansion. So do I, and you're going to ruin it. Now, take this. Oh, no. Get in there, and if you make one sound, I'll buy your bank and burn it down. <laughs> Who is it? Kid Clampett, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Clampett, how nice of you to come. We have so much to talk about. Well, uh... Won't take me long to speak my piece. You I... haven't even told me how you like my little place here. Well, it's right nice for what I can see of it. <laughs> Gotta knock a few winners in it, though. That's a marvelous idea. Thank you. Now, ma'am, I come here to talk about all that stuff you give my family. I don't hold with that, and every bit of it is coming back. You know, when you're angry, your eyes flash blue fire. It ain't that I... I don't hold... They do? I'll put out the fire. You ain't gonna put it out like that. Oh, let's be friends. You want about that the right way. <laughs> Uncle Jed! You're stealing my woman. All right. I'm not your woman. See, you already stole her. Just get out of here. You're going to spoil everything. Mr. Drysdale, how many men you got around here anyhow? Two more than I need. <laughs> Just for that, I ain't going to marry you. You're too fickle. You can have your old car back, too. <laughs> Miss Richards, here's the things you give us. We wanted to fetch them back to you clean. But they wouldn't take a washing worth shucks, especially this feathered shawl. <laughs> yeah, Granny's last soap just took the stripes right off this year's zipper. <laughs> so I didn't want to take a chance and wash the spots off of this bird dog. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go home, huh? Yeah, Jed, don't sell our house. Never aim to. 
Well, Miss Richards, you're welcome to come visit us any time. Forget it. I'm well, just trying to be friendly. Now, you'll forgive me if I don't show you to the door. Come on, family. I think it's time we go home. Now then, about this plan of mine. You two, out. Not that way. That way. Miss Richards, that's 30 floors. Happy landing. <laughs> Listen. If I do jump, will you open an account in my bank? <laughs> Expensive, too. Oh, and the people are here. Mm. Everyone they could put the bite on. Oh. Here are the Gaylord Diffuse from Pasadena. Yoo-hoo! Rosemary! Gymnastics. <laughs> the race has started. <laughs> Quick, Melbourne, let me have the binoculars. Oh, this is terrible. What? We're giving a party after the race, and Evelyn and Gladys are wearing identical dresses. <laughs> I'll have Mr. Drysdale call the moment he returns. Oh, uh, before you hang up, could I speak to Jethro, please? Well, he ain't here right now. He's out giving Granny another driving lesson. Yeah, she likes to be able to get around on her own, so she... Hey, Pa, I think you better come quick. Granny's headed up the front line. Oh, you're back, Miss Jean. That's Granny's driving, all right. <laughs> Granny, are you hurt? No, I'm all right. And you call yourself a driving teacher. Not no more. I'm through. I done give my last driving lessons. Uncle Jean, she's getting worse instead of better. Where'd you hit the tree? Out in front of the Drysdales. It's your fault. They told me to turn around. So I turned around. That's when we walked into the tree. Granny, I meant turned the car around. She was starting up a one-way street. You shouldn't have yelled at me. Well, all them cars heading right for us. <laughs> I'm through risking my life with them contraptions. Too many people on the street driving around that have no business. That's the truth. Jeff, you need any help getting the truck out of here? Shucks, no, Uncle Jeff. There's only one end of the lift. Well, you just want me to take this tree over to the Drysdales and set it back into the ground? Yeah, now would be a good time to do it, too, while it's still, still at the park looking at the horses. Horses? Jed, did you say the Drysdales buy on a horse? Well, Miss Jane didn't say nothing about them buying them one. She just said they were going out to look at some trotters. By dingies, that's what I need. A high-stepping trotter and a shiny buggy. <laughs> you would be trying to drive that truck. I don't recall ever seeing a buggy in Beverly Hill. Maybe they're going to make a comeback. <laughs> could be. I've been hearing a lot about there being too many automobiles and how they's causing smog and traffic jams. And accidents. I've seen three of them just while I was driving. Is that a fact? I was in two of them. <laughs> it would be a lot safer driving a horse and buggy. Uh, two heads is always better than one, especially when one belongs to a horse. I just bet they're going to come back and stop. That's why Miss Drysdale's buying one. Now, uh, hold on. Miss Jane didn't say they was buying one. I know Miss Drysdale. She's always got to be the first in the neighborhood. <laughs> Where did Miss Jane say they was going? Some place called uh, Hollywood Park. That sounds just like the spot where they'd have a barbecue and a horse auction. Let's go. Now, hold on, Granny. We don't know if they're having a horse auction. Miss Jean said it's society day out there, and we sure don't want to get mixed up in that. Oh, Jed, 
I feel so grand, driving around Beverly Hills in a nice shiny buggy with yellow wheels and black leather seats and a red fringe on the top. <laughs> Let me call Miss Jean and see can we get the horse before you start fitting out the buggy. I want a high stepper with long silky mane with lots of spirits, a real prancher. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale? Miss Hathaway! What are you doing here? Something wrong at the bank? No, Chief, but Mr. Clampett called. Something wrong with the Clampets? No, 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 Chief. But then what are you doing at the racetrack on my time? Uh, the nature of Mr. Clampett's call was such that I felt justified in coming here. Uh, it seems that Granny is most... If you two are going to discuss those revolting hillbillies, I'm going to the turf club. <laughs> where the conversation is on a higher level. Well, what, is, what about the Clampets? Well, it seems... The Clampets want to buy a trotting horse. What? Apparently, your being here today gave them the idea. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come. That wife of mine's to blame. <laughs> now, wait, Chief. The idea has some merit. Are you off your rocker? Those horses cost a fortune. The idea is to keep their money in my bank, not spend it. But, but, but hear me out. I'll throw you out! <laughs> now, you go back there and change your minds and dock yourself all the time you've wasted. Chief, Chief please. <laughs> Listen to my thoughts on the matter. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, the, the Clampets purchasing a racehorse may have many advantages, both financial and otherwise. You're raving! First of all, it is a capital investment, subject to depreciation and capital gain and loss taxes. Really? Yes. Secondly, it ties in with their, their love of animals, uh, their desire to own livestock. Yeah. And it could erase the threat of their moving back to the country. How? Well, an occasional visit to the stables might very well satisfy their urge for the rural life. Yeah. And you're sure of the tax advantages, eh? Well, I checked with our expert at the bank. And in addition to all this, it is just possible that their horse might win a vast amount of money. Terrific! Terrific! Oh, by George, this is one of the best ideas I've ever had. Congratulations, Chief. Just doing my job. Well, let's go down to the stables and buy the most beautiful horse we can find. Oh, perhaps the Clampets would like to pick it out themselves. No, no. I don't want them to change their minds. I want them to see that horse this afternoon and fall in love with it. Meantime, you make arrangements for boarding it. Right, Chief. Oh, uh, by the way, about your coming here, I... I, I'm sorry that I yelled at you. In fact, I think you deserve a reward. Really? Yes. Just forget about ducking yourself. <laughs> Thank you. How soon do you want me to come back for you, Doc? Oh, half an hour, 45 minutes. Mr. Drysdale said to give Mr. Clampett a good look at Lady Bell, then we'll take her to the boarding stables. Howdy! What you got in there? $30,000 worth of hot flesh. Hot dog! We's gonna eat tonight! <laughs> <laughs> Say, fellas, there's a live horse in here! Beauty, too. Yeah, she's one of the finest in the country. Big money winner at Hollywood Park. Is that so? I won some money at a park once. Shooting them little ducks as they go along. <laughs> How did she win? Guessing people's weight. <laughs> Gee, that's a smart horse. You're not Mr. Clampett, are you? Uh, no, sir. He's my uncle. Would you tell him his horse is here? Is this my Uncle Jed's horse? Yeah, Mr. Drysdale arranged the purchase. Boy, wait till Ellie hears about this. She's been wanting a zebra, but this is pretty near as good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's running around loose. Maybe they're cleaning his cage. Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed! What is it, boy? Your horse is here. Horse? What horse? The one from Hollywood Park. The smart one. It's out front right now. I'll go find Ellie. Jed, you sweet old rascal. You wanted to surprise me. No, Granny, I... Uh... Yes, you did, and you're the nicest son-in-law a woman ever had. And I'm going to kiss you. Well, honestly, uh, must you have been Miss Jane. You know how I like surprises. Well, no, Granny, I... Uh, you... I love you, Jed. You darling man. Well, you see, I didn't... And you don't let me kiss you, or ain't you? Granny, I... <laughs> 
You wanted to surprise me, didn't you? Yeah, now let's go out and look at the horse. <laughs> hey, mister, whose horse? She belongs to Mr. J.D. Clampett. Pa bought a horse? Well, she's a beauty. Howdy, girl. Be careful now, she's skittish. No, she ain't. We's gonna be friends, ain't we? I'll give you carrots and sugar look. You certainly have a way with horses. I like critters. I've never seen Lady Bell take to anyone like she has to you. Oh, Jess, she's a dandy. <laughs> her name's Lady Bell, Granny. I'll thank you for getting her. Sure, I'm getting a lot of kissing that ain't rightfully mine. <laughs> Good chest, don't her? Uh, Mr. Clampett? Yes, sir. I'm Doc Pritchett, Lady Bell's handler. Oh, pleased to meet you. Mighty fine animal. Oh, thank you. I uh, have some papers here that have to be signed. Well, come on in the house. All right. We's all kind of surprised by this. Well, Mr. Drysdale made all the arrangements. Got yourself a mighty fine trotter there. Yes, sir. Between us, I don't care much about this buggy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a city style book. City or country. There's got to be a place for the reins. This thing must weigh a ton. Take a plow horse to pull it. Well, it's got rubber tires and nice windows. You know how you drive it. There ain't no place to sit down in here. You know what I'd do if this thing was mine? I'd let the horse ride in it. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Mr. Clampett. That's all right. Come on, Paul. I'll show you her teeth. Well, uh, Mr. Clampett tells me that Lady Bell is going to be your horse. Uh, what do you think of her? She's fine. But I don't see how she pulls that heavy contraption around. <laughs> oh, she doesn't. Uh, she's a sulky horse. Well, I don't blame her. <laughs> hmm? Where's the ring she likes to pull? Oh, that's over at the stables, along with the harness and the other equipment. Well, I'd like to have it. Up here? Of course. I want to show off around the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Drysdale said anything you want. Uh, may I use your phone? Right in the hall. Help yourself. Granny, I think you're going to be real happy with us, Mayor. I'll be happier when her buggy gets here. That fella's having her sent up from the stables. Well, can I ride her out to the gate and back? Let me have a turn on her first, Ellie. I think I'll gallop by Miss Drysdale's and give her a look. You want a leg up? Of course not. I've never needed any help to get on a horse. Just give me a little running room. <laughs> I'm just as spry as I ever was. <laughs> now hold still, Lady Bell. <laughs> What could have happened? She's been gone for half an hour. Nothing to worry about. Granny sets a horse like most folks set a rocker. Yeah, but Lady Bell isn't a saddle horse. That's all right. Granny ain't using one. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mr. Clamp. Nervous kind of fella. Ought to pick up Whitland. There's your sulky, Doc. Never mind that. We got to find Lady Bell. She run off? She was ridden off. Bareback. A $30,000 trotter? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Jeff, what's this thing? You reckon it's Granny's buggy? Well, if it is, most of it's missing. <laughs> well, you went around the yard once, Jethro. Okay. Hold it, youngins. Here it comes Granny. Whoa, Lady Bell. Whoa, girl. <laughs> What's that? I'm afraid that's the buggy the fella promised you. Jed, it looks like we've been took. Well, he got shorter to might on the buggy, but there's nothing wrong with the horse. Is there? What is it? I must have rode her ten miles. Used every trick I know. Never could get her to go faster than a trot. <laughs> Everything ready, Jed? Man's got Lady Bell all hitched and harnessed up. Did they find the back half of the buggy? Well, now, uh, about that, uh, I'm afraid them fellas at the horse auction see Mr. Drydale coming. What you mean? 
You wouldn't believe what kind of money he paid for that horse and buggy. Not more than a hundred dollars, I hope. Well, uh, I would top that a little. <laughs> Better remember, he's a city fella, and he thought he was doing us a powerful favor. Well, let's go look at it. Well, now, uh, what I wanted to tell you was, uh, Mr. Drydale and Miss Jane just come. And I want you to try extra hard not to act disappointed in front of them. All right. <laughs> There she is, all decked out and ready to go. How do you like it? Fine, Mr. Drysdale, just fine. She's made a wonderful purchase, don't you think? Sure, sure. <laughs> well, come take a closer look. Sit in the driver's seat. Oh, you'll get a big thrill out of it. Driver's seat? Where is the rest of you supposed to ride? We'll take care of it. Can't even go to the market in that thing. No place to carry your groceries. I'll fix it for you. Now, come on. Look for some good things to say. Like what? <laughs> Granny? Well... She loves it. I picked a real winner for you, Granny. You think so? Oh, yes. You can bring home the bacon with us. Where? Where? There ain't even a place to put your feet. Uh, oh, uh, say, Mr. Drysdale, uh, Miss Jane, I just remembered. A granny baked up some special coffee cake to show her appreciation to you folks. Now, Ellie Mae, why don't you take him in the kitchen and serve him up a big happy? Yes, sir, Pop. Well, I'm not especially hungry. I... Neither am I. You don't want to hurt Granny's feelings, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> How's the set, Granny? Poor. Now, don't you worry. Jethro and me will build you a box so you can put your feet and your groceries in. Well, but, Jeff, this rig ain't for hauling. It's for racing. Racing? Yeah, I was talking to the dock yonder. He says the fellow that sold it to Mr. Drysdale didn't do nothing else. Went all around the country racing. All right, doggies, I'll bet you that's the reason he stripped this buggy down so he'd get as light as he could. Jeb, I like racing as well as the next person. And I even took some things off Pearl's buggy so I could beat Elverna Bradshaw. But this is ridiculous. Maybe the reason that he had to strip it down special light was because the horse was slow. Slow? I couldn't even get her to break into a gallop. Well, that don't make no sense at all. Doc says Lady Bell was bred and trained for nothing but racing. Been in over hundreds of them. Reckon it was your setting on her that slowed her? Could be if she wasn't used to it. Hand me them reins, Jethro. I'll give her another try. Steve, go to the bridle, Doc. Whoa, Lady Bell. That's a good girl. Well, Granny, I'll bet you've never driven a horse like that before. Quite a thrill, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, let's go right out to Hollywood Park and enter Lady Bell in tomorrow's big race. Good. We'll have our money back the first day. Come on. See you in the winter's circle. Tally ho. Well, Granny? Like you said, Jed, they seen Mr. Drysdale coming. Slow, huh? A mule skinner couldn't get that turtle to do better than a trot. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale. He's already counting the money that Lady Bell's gonna win for him tomorrow. The only way that horse can win a race is setting in the back end of a fast car. <laughs> Get one chance. Ellie Mae. She ain't got a fast car. Oh, but she got away with critters. Forget it. We got to try for Mr. Drydale's sake. How come? If you know what he paid for that horse, you wouldn't ask. Come on, Margaret, let me have the glasses. They're getting ready for the first race. All right, Milburn, just let me see. Ah! Howdy, folks. Howdy. Oh, Mr. Clavis, oh, your box is right behind us. Oh, thank you. What are those dinky people doing here? They happen to own one of the finest trotters in the country. Poor Granny and Ellie Mae. But Don's talking to the horse. Granny comes, Ellie. Here, Ellie, right up here. Howdy, everybody. Howdy. You know, if Granny doesn't hurry, she's going to miss the first race. Oh, no, she ain't going to miss it. She's going to be in it. Gonna they come get ready to come in. I don't see Granny or Lady Bell. She'll be along in a minute. Yeah, they was a little trouble about getting there started with others. <laughs> Catch 
show me you got to run like Illy learned you. Come on now, get up! <laughs> Come on. Jeff, before we paint them buggy wheels, can we have some breakfast? Well, I ain't gonna eat time, boy. Granny'll be up in a minute. It's after four now. <laughs> you mean? You keep watch. Let us know the minute you hear Granny stirring. Yes, sir, Pop. Come on, boy. The yellow paint outside. Yes, sir. But ain't you afraid all that growling and grumbling will wake Granny? What growling and grumbling? My stomach. I ain't had nothing to eat since a midnight snack. <laughs> Get your stomach for a little while. It's going to be worth it to see Granny's face when she finds his buggy out here this morning. I reckon so, but how come it's got to have yellow wheels? Yeah. Something Granny's been wanting all her life. A nice, shiny black buggy with yellow wheels. Mr. Drysdale has bought her this fine high-stepping horse. We is going to surprise her with the rest of the rig. I'll get the other side. Yes, sir. What in the blue blazes? <laughs> Morning, Chad. Wondering what happened to all the lanterns. <laughs> What's the big idea? I was afraid you'd forget about the yellow wheels. How long you known about this buggy? Since you fetched it home last evening. We was going to spring it on you. I know. I figured I'd be done painting and be back up in bed in time for you to surprise me. <laughs> I couldn't find a lantern. Jen, if you and Granny don't quit talking so loud, you're going to wake Granny. <laughs> Granny? She knows all about it. Hot dog. Now we can eat. <laughs> now, hold on, boy. By the time Granny's through making breakfast, we can be done painting these wheels. Yeah, then you can surprise me. <laughs> I sure wonder how she found out this buggy was here. Search me. I'd done everything I could to keep it a secret. You did? <laughs> yes, sir. I told her last night, I says, don't open that front door, because there's something out there you ain't supposed to see. <laughs> Good work, boy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sleeping in the parlor here. Yes, sir, Granny. Uh, that was a surprise I didn't want you to get. What you doing in here? Well, you said you couldn't sleep in my room no more. The lady bear likes it here just fine. <laughs> I'm warning you. If the Clampets keep that horse on the premises another day... Don't worry, I... Margaret. She goes back this morning. 
it. What I can't understand is why you bought it for them in the first place. As an investment. Lady Bell is a champion bred harness racer. I didn't know they were going to make a house pet out of it. House pet? I understand Ellie May let it sleep in her room. Well, for once that mansion had a well-bred occupant. <laughs> now remember, this morning. Don't worry. This is one time I'm with you. That's a $30,000 racehorse. That's it, Lady Bell. Step high and handsome. Show your style. That's it. Whoa! Granny. Morning, Mr. Drysdale. How do you like my buggy? Well, fine, but you shouldn't let Lady Bell pull it. Why not? Granny, I want to take her back where I bought her. She ain't that bad. All I have to do is... Break her from wanting to trot all the time. Well, look, Granny, I'm a little late getting down to the bank, so... Get I... in, I'll get you there in a the jiffy. Well, well, no. I can get her to gallop if I need to. You see me win the race. Well, it's not that. I have a ride to the bank. Well, then I'll take Miss Drysdale for a spin. No, please. Why not? Because I've changed my mind. I'd like you to drive me to the bank. Fine. <laughs> but I want your wife to see my new rig. I'll call her. Miss Drysdale! You don't want Margaret to see this. Oh. Afraid she'll want one, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Let's go. I'm late. Hear that, Lady Bell? Just like Ellie showed you for the race. Cut loose! <laughs> Come on, Lady Bell, show him some real speed. Whoa, Lady Bell, easy, girl. Cool her down, youngins. She's been clean to town and back. Well, that's where you've been. Took Mr. Drysdale to work. How do you like the buggy ride? Jed, he plumb loved it. When we pulled up in front of the bank, he didn't want to get out. He didn't, huh? Had to pry his hands loose. He was hanging on so hard that his knuckles turned white. And he was kind of trembling and, and breathing heavy. I like he enjoyed it, all right. Maybe he'll be getting a buggy. Mm, I sure hope so. <laughs> yes, I was thinking of it all the way home. How nice it would be for Miss Drysdale. She could take her husband to work, go shopping. Every once in a while, we'd meet up, me and my buggy and her and her and... and Maybe have a little friendly race. Like you used to have with over in the Bradshaw back home. Yeah. Jed, why don't we give the Drysdales a horse and buggy as a present? My doggy, Granny, that's a real neighborly thought. Ain't it, though? Friendly, kind, generous. And it's the only way I can make sure that she don't get a faster rig than mine. <laughs> Has just taken effect yet? Oh, I'm feeling better now. Help me to my desk. Chief, go. Oh, you're not in the buggy, girl. <laughs> Listen, you can retrieve Lady Bell. Granny's bought another horse. She's bought another horse. Yes, the stable just called to check her credit. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, let's hurry up there and grab Lady Bell. I can get my thirty thousand dollars back. Excuse me, Chief, but how are you going to get Lady Bell back to Hollywood Park? Carrier in my arm. <laughs> well, did you get the Drysdale's a horse and buggy? Sure did, Jed. It's a dandy rig. Miss Drysdale and me's gonna have some first class races. Well, good. Let's go have a look. Hi, doggies. That is a fast looking buggy. Best I could find. Now, from a look at this horse. You and Miss Drysdale is going to be about an even match. She is the twin of Lady Bell. Well, this is Lady Bell, Paul. Where's Miss Drysdale's horse? Jethro's walking her around side the house. Yeah, she's a high-spirited animal, Jed. Her name's Lightning. Uh, let's go eat. Well, uh, I want to see her, uh, Jethro. When you've seen one horse, you've seen them all. Now, come on, now, I'm hungry. Yeah, go ahead and eat. I want to take a look at Lightning. Johnny, she comes. Now, 
wait a bit. If you're going to laugh, I'm going to have to take you around back. <laughs> his horse lightning I did <laughs> Granny was you honestly fixing to give this poor old animal to Miss Drydale what do you mean poor old animal all it needs is a little grooming and some good food what'll it use to chew with it's got teeth hasn't it Jethro yes ma'am one upper one lower <laughs> nobody asked you to count <laughs> Now, Granny, you do the right thing and take this horse back where you bought it. Well, I don't think they'll take it back. It was on sale. Yeah, $175. For this critter? No, sir, for the buggy. They threw the horse in free. <laughs> well, you take it back and get Miss Drysdale an animal she can be proud of. She can be proud of this, son. Granny, I am plumb ashamed of you. Doggone it, Jed. Back home, Elverna Bradshaw beat me every Sunday for 30 years. I'm an old woman, Jed. And before I go to my reward, I'd like to win one buggy race. You're missing the most important part. It ain't that you win or lose, but how you play the game. That's all right for him. But at my age, I gotta take my wins any way I can get them. <laughs> Oh, no. Look what they've done to Lady Bell. Gee, that can't be Lady Bell. Uh, you weren't on that buggy ride. It aged me 20 years, and I didn't run. <laughs> that must be the horse Granny got to replace Lady Bell. Oh. <laughs> Granny, what a magnificent animal. Where? Oh, you mean old Glupa, or, or uh, Lightning. You like her, huh? Oh, she's beautiful. She's a much better horse than Lady Bell. You know something, Mr. Drysdale? For a city fella, you sure are a shrewd judge of horse flesh. Well, it doesn't take an expert to see that she's a real champion. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to give you that champion horse. Well, what for? For that buggy. I'm going to throw that in, too. But I have no use for a horse and buggy. Well, it's really for your missus. Margaret? You said she wanted one. I did? <laughs> yes, I guess I did. Well, now she's got one. And her and me can have some nice buggy races. Buggy races? Well, kind of friendly affairs around the neighborhood. But Margaret hasn't had any experience. She... That's all right. Lightning has had enough experience for the both of them. <laughs> well, thank you, but I don't... Are you turning down my gift? Oh, no, no. Of course not. Good. Then wake her up. I mean, hitch her up. Well, take her home. I, I don't know how to hitch up a horse. I'll show you. No, you show Miss Hathaway. I have something to discuss with Mr. Clampett. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, this buggy racing is something Granny's had in her craw for 30 years now, and ain't none of us going to get no peace or quiet around here till she's shed of it. But my wife... Now, if does. Granny could just womp your wife in one race, I figure she'd be satisfied and forget all about it. But I don't. Your wife wouldn't mind doing that, would she? For me? <laughs> Mr. Clampett, she'd be delighted. <laughs> Race with Granny in a buggy in public? You must be demented. <laughs> Margaret, sweetheart, listen. Please do this for me. I'm begging you. Milton, for four years, I've been begging you to rid our neighborhood of those squatters. Have you ever listened to me? Of course. But you've never lifted a finger to get rid of them. No, but I've listened to you. Uh, <laughs> Margaret, wait, please. Uh, Milburn, just how much does this mean to you? Everything, anything. Name your price. A dinner out, a new girdle. Okay. All right, all right. You name it. Very well. This is my price. I will race with Granny if you will get the Clampets out of Beverly Hills permanently. You know I can't do that. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale! <laughs> Mr. 
Here's your horse and buggy. Well, where's the horse? Well, she give out on the way. Ellie and Miss Jane are fetching her. <laughs> Come back. I'll meet your price. You will? Yes. If you race with Granny and beat her, I'll see that the Krampus move. Wonderful. Beat her? Well, that's a foregone conclusion. You'll be driving a horse by the name of Lightning. It can go as fast as Jane Hathaway's convertible. You're joking. My word of honor. She was driving, and that horse stayed right behind her. <laughs> that, that's my girl. I'll go tell Granny the good news. Have them start packing. I'll do that. <laughs> Hurry. Get this magnificent thoroughbred out of sight until race time. Now, Jeff, well, you lifted her in. Now, lift her out. <laughs> <laughs> Granny says she mixed up some special feed. Yeah. Gee, I wish I'd have known you wanted it. I'd have saved you some. You mean you ate it? Yes, sir. All of them? Well, just this one pot, full. Oh, you take the cake. Where? Never mind. But, Uncle Jed, I'm still hungry. Lifting that horse in and out of Miss Jane's car give me an appetite. You put a horse in Miss Jane's car? Yes, sir. That was the only way we could get that poor old thing over to the Drysdales. Poor old thing. Lightning. Here, Uncle Jeff. I scraped you up a spoonful. Oh, thanks. So Granny stuck Miss Drysdale with lightning, huh? They call her old glue pot over to the stable. Well, she ain't going to get away with it. You and me is going over to that stable and get Miss Drysdale the finest buggy horse money can buy. Okay. You don't want some of this? No, thanks. Come on. I just changed my mind. Too late. I swallowed it. I got a better idea about the horse. We are really going to learn Granny to cheat. No need to do that. She does pretty good right now. <laughs> Classic. My pleasure, ma'am. I just want to see you had a fair chance of winning. Hey, this horse looks like Lady Bell. There's a resemblance, ain't it? Uh, you just sit up here beside me for a spell, and, and uh, later on, you can take the reins. Mr. Clampett, you don't know what you're doing. Oh, I think I do. Once you drove a buggy, you don't forget. <laughs> Let's go, I think. What a goof up. I wonder how I can blame this on Miss Hathaway. <laughs> Another batch of my special feed, Lady Bell. This'll give you that extra gold power. Not that you need it to beat that old plug of a lightning. <laughs> now, Lady Bell, you don't have to hang your head. If anybody says the race ain't fair, I'll take the blame. Come on now, stand up straight. <laughs> You ain't Lady Bell. Use lightning. Somebody's trying to fix the race. Miss Drysdale. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a cheater. Hey, right near race time, where are you? Well, she ain't upstairs, though. She sure ain't downstairs. She ain't outside, Uncle Jed. I looked every place. Well, youngin, I reckon there's nothing left for us to do but go out front and tell everybody that Granny has turned chicken. That she has got a yellow streak up her back and she is just plumb scared to death to race Miss Drysdale. Just a doggone minute. <laughs> No yellow streak, and I ain't stiff. Then what was you doing in the broom closet? I stepped in there by mistake. That's my shop. Granny, everybody's waiting out front for the rice to come in. The buggies is out there and all hitched up. Well, you two young'uns get out there and tell them I'm coming. 
And tell him I can beat Miss Drysdale driving a hay wagon hitched to a hog. That'll be great. <laughs> when are you going back in there for? She ain't driving no hay wagon hitched to a hog, and I ain't got a chance. <laughs> you are going out there and take your lumps. I'll be the laughing stock of Beverly Hills with that glue pot. That's what you was planning for Miss Drysdale, wasn't it? Come on. No. I'm an old woman, Jed. I don't think I can make it. My ticker ain't so good. A mule should have your ticker. Come on. No, 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 no. Wait. Let me get a bottle of tonic in case my liver goes sour. I'm awful old, Jed. Yeah, let's go. Here she is, folks. The race can commence. Granny? I'm coming. I just wanted to get a little straw for my horse. Good luck, Granny. Good luck, Granny. I remember what I told you. It ain't that you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Yeah, I'll remember. Here, old lady, I know your teeth ain't much, but take a good stiff pull on this straw. <laughs> how does that grab you? <laughs> Wait till I get on first. <laughs> when you mark, it's it. can stay in my wife can lump it. I see lightning and I, and I see granny, but look. Oh, my dear, oh, I win. Where's your buggy? Lightning run so fast, she pulled right out of the harness. Where, where's my wife? Running a poor second. And I hope this teaches her a lesson. Cheating don't pay. <laughs>